Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to Waffleville. We got something here that's kind of interesting. This was something that I actually put together on a podcast just on Sunday. Yeah, just a couple days ago. And I've been meaning to do this type of a diorama here. This is Eowyn, and this is the Glittering Caves. Basing bits here from Make It Epic. And I did this again on the podcast. It only took a half an hour, 35 minutes, something like that to just get her on the base and then build up this stuff right here. It was really fun. I have to say I had a blast doing this. I'll probably try and do this again as uh, some kind of a demo video or something like that because there's some more things I'd like to do to this. I don't know if we'll be able to paint the base there. Hey, Surface Tension. Nice to see you. Yeah, Surface Tension, you are the first one in here. So check this out. We've got a Eowyn diorama here. And I've been wanting to do this glittering caves thing for the longest time. Been waiting since probably about, I don't know, 2003 to paint this miniature right here. Uh, <laughs> the first, the best part of uh, waiting 20 years is that you maybe finally eventually get to actually do it. So we're going to see what we can do with this figure here. Obviously not super complicated. I was thinking about doing some, uh, maybe not necessarily object source lighting, but some kind of... Uh, backlighting or something like that. I don't know if that's really going to work so easily, but I thought maybe if it's coming from this way, some kind of bluish light from this side. I don't know. I'm going to try and get a little perline black, a little bit of the indigo going here. Nah, maybe, maybe more indigo, something like that. So this is an old metal figure. Couldn't tell you exactly when the heck this thing came out, but my guess is 2002, 2003. It's a Two Towers figure. Now, of course, uh, oh, apparently this Sunday, uh, of course it's at 8 in the morning my time. That's just going to be fantabulous. There is some kind of mm, Lord of the Rings or, you know, uh, Middle Earth strategy battle game presentation that's supposed to happen. Uh, so I don't know. S uh, some of the rumor is whatever is about a new starter box. We'll see. We'll see about that. Obviously, they just did War Cry for the hundredth time in the last few years. You know, there's been, I think, four or five new Space Marine boxes that have come out in the last week or so. Because, you know, that's it's all about the Space Marines. Thank you so much, Surface Tension. Appreciate that. Uh, surface tension. If you want to shout your shout, yeah, shout yourself out or anything like that, that's fine. Armored Wolf is at a uh, not Adepticon but at Gen Con. He's setting up in booth twenty seven thirteen. So booth twenty seven thirteen. That's where Armored Wolf is going to be. So hopefully, folks that are at Gen Con, if you're there, you're watching this. Don't don't forget to go to booth twenty seven thirteen. Look for Armored Wolf. Oh gosh, now let's ask. So some of the things they were talking about for Lord of the Rings was it would have a new board size because then there would be terrain, uh, kind of like Warcry. And who knows, maybe they do something like the Warcry cards. That do people really use those very much, or do people more just set up and play the game? Uh, just, just not sure. Again, I, I never got a chance to play it. We were supposed to start playing it at the Adepticon that never was. And, well, we never played it <laughs> ever. Uh, actually, no, wait. Kathy got to play a couple of games at the Adepticon staff meeting back in 2019. But uh, me, not so much. Okay, Surface Tension. Yeah, we're just getting started here. We're just getting started, so thank you so much, Surface Tension, and uh, we'll see you back in just a bit. Now, what I might do is zip out here just a smidge, and oh, what the heck? Maybe I will start throwing some stuff under this base right here. I mean, we got it after all. We have the stuff out here. I'll just do that, and I might even just let it uh, sit on here for a while while we actually work on the Eowyn figure. Because reason, hey, Rottweiler. Ah, okay, so God's Ultra Eagle likes the uh, cards, made him for, for a kill team. So everybody please give Rottweiler 16 
16 a follow because right while they're still streaming right now so yeah i mean you can you can lurk here and go uh, go check out Rottweiler, or you can just lurk on both of us, or have us both talking at the same time. Yes, we could both be talking at you at once. That won't be a that won't be a mental strain at all. But uh, Rottweiler, uh, nice to see you. Here we're just uh, again going to keep slamming in some of these uh, darker colors here. Sometimes it's going to be Van Dyke Brown. Sometimes it might be more like the indigo. Now, what I could do is all these sort of the drippings of the stalactite stuff. I could just take the heavy gloss. Ooh, you know what? I should do that. I should do that with the heavy gloss gel. Put some color in it. And then just kind of drip that stuff over the top, almost like it's uh, wax or something. That could make for an interesting video. Again, I have no clue how the heck that would work. Now, I've never done something like that before. Ah, we're listening to the Black and Yellow House Baratheon. Ah, uh, uh, ooh, uh, ah, boy, Landress. Oh, you know what, Landress? I forgot to send you a picture. Ah, uh, gosh, I don't know. Well, let me let me see here. Let me see if I can bring that up somehow on my no no that wouldn't would that be here eh, it's probably not going to be here is it no that's just my photograph sadly um i, I don't know here <laughs> landris let me see if i can't maybe send this to you somehow but i've never actually tried doing something like this while i'm streaming oh wait there they are all right so landris i just sent you a picture of those Tell me what those remind you of. Uh, I think it'll take you all of about two seconds to look at those and go, huh, that's what those guys are. Uh, I just I thought that was kind of interesting. So, Rottweiler, I hope that everything's going well. I, I could swear that I s Oh, actually, well, no, you don't, you're streaming right now. You, it's going to be difficult for you to post an Instagram link while you're streaming. So uh, once you're done streaming or something like that, you want to post any links in the chat, you know, that's fine. So yeah, Landress, I was thinking of trying to snag that because that's the August release. The key thing is, take a look at those horses. Uh, those those are pretty realistic horses, wouldn't you say, Landress? No, I have no idea. If the writers are separate from those files, I I'm guessing they're separate. So as as much as we love the Rohan stuff, I mean we got we got a little bit of it, right? All right, here let's uh, oh, I think we're almost done there. So Sarge, I hope that the I don't know I hope that hobby purge is getting close to an end. I hope that's uh somewhere I don't know. Do you think you're at the uh, the final stretch of that? Bithron, how you doing? Uh, so Bithron, I know that it's been a little bit of a grind for you on the hobby side there, just trying to find something that really solidly catches your fancy. Hopefully you can just kind of, I don't know, with, uh, with shifts not changing quite so rapidly, maybe you can kind of get that that mojo back because, uh, well, you were cranking out the buildings, you were cranking out the tanks. If you want to show off your finished tanks, that would be sensational because love us some f captured uh, finished vehicles, right? We love those. All right, so here I'm just going to let that set. See how that's all kind of glossy? Remember this, when we hit this, it wasn't quite so glossy anymore. You know what? I might just chuck a little bit of the Severus Blue in there. Let's see what happens here. And this is very much a dry brush. But it's not a dry brush. Cause, like you see how that darker color that's already starting to get on our brush. This is the difference between, say, a dead kind of, uh, what would you call that, the Zenithal priming versus our preglaze. Thank you so much, Sarge. Appreciate that. Look at that. 26 months. 26 months. Please, everybody, check out the links posted by Rottweiler. There's a Discord and an Etsy. So check out the Rune Forge painting. I almost said rune frog. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> the way the chat had it, I was like, Rune Frog? That's not what I remember. But <laughs> Rune Forge Painting. Yes, check that out, please. So thanks again, right? Well, look at that. See that? See that darker color on the end of the brush there? What does that mean? That means this paint is mixing. Oh, I see we've got a little uh, chunk of our metal right here. We're just going to get rid of that. There we go. And all the while we do this, we are mixing. See, look at that. See that darker paint on there? So thank you so much, Sarge, for the sub. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's... Here, let's get a little bit more of this. Uh, that's going to be the other... Yeah, that should be darker. Let's maybe throw a little bit of some kind of a reflected light onto here. Maybe a little bit down there. A little bit over here. This is by no means our lightest color. We're just kind of getting started there. I just want to have a little something. Something I can work from. That's all. That's all. And this should happen really, really fast. Why, why fool around, right? Why fool around forever? And we can just kind of blast through these things. Get some very nice results, too. See down there into the acrylic. Look at, see that, that dark stuff on the end of the brush there? It wasn't there a second ago, was it? See how we can smooth that out very nicely. Uh, so Rottweiler, uh, oof, sorry I don't have my graphics down here. I had to just remove graphics because of all the crazy things happening with the machine. But you can just send me a message to, to Wapelius on Instagram. Yeah, just Wapelius on Instagram. It's the same as my Twitch handle here. It's the same exact one. <laughs> it's pretty much the same on everything. I think I'm also Wapelius on uh, on eBay and everything else. Just we, I kind of got stuck with that years ago. And by years ago, I mean literally 20 years ago. Ever since we've been stuck with that. So if you're going to give yourself some kind of a moniker, just realize you're stuck with that for, well, ever and ever and ever. All right, Sarge, you have yourself a good one. Uh, Sarge, I'll just shoot you a message, kind of uh, filling you in maybe on some of the goings-on here. Uh, again, there's really, boy, there's just not much in the way of info, unfortunately, to tell you, but we'll we'll try. Okay, I'll shoot you a message tomorrow and kind of see how things are going for you as well. Time to do some stuff with her here. So yeah, Rottweiler, if you don't mind shooting me a message at the at Wapelius on uh, Instagram there, that is, well, that either that or Facebook Messenger. Those are the two best ways. The worst way is Discord. Now, I will never see that. I guarantee I will never see a message on Discord. So for anyone that's ever sent me a message there, uh, it's most likely gone unseen and will remain unseen. So you want to probably shoot me a message via Again, uh, Instagram or Messenger. Those those are the way, as they say. That's how you get that done. Ooh, Space Toy, that sounds sensational. Also, too, if you have any links, you know, uh, I don't know if you've posted it to Instagram or anywhere, but if you want, or just if you want to post your regular links there, into the chat and everybody please also give space toy a follow so yeah space toy be sure to show folks what you've been working on too sorry if i miss anybody again it's just kind of been one of those sort of days so the brain is not really at a high functioning status so <laughs> i may need to think about something once or twice before it actually gets spit out of my face hey clinton hobbies Speaking of Instagram, uh, Clinton Hobbies, I saw your post on Insta earlier today, so you should also post that into the chat there so that people can see it. Because I, I saw it. I know that. And I was. Uh, I figured maybe it might be in here. So you could uh, maybe pop that into the chat as well. I'm going to have to try and do some gold, I think, on that part there. So you can see this is really starting to uh, accelerate quickly here. 
Yeah, space toy. There was a uh, a lot of well life stuff. I know you were you were saying kind of some of the just well not so fun things that you had to deal with along the way. Hmm, what am I gonna do with it? Yeah, I'm gonna here. Let me actually grab my uh, picture here. Okay, so you know what? Let's try this first. Let's try this first. Like so. Okay, and then I'm just going to let that sit there. Let me see if we can start to get the darker. And that's uh, more of a... Wow, that's almost more like a Van Dyke Brown or something. Okay, well. Uh, how's about we go this way with it, maybe? Almost more like a pin line wash. Let me look at a different picture here. One second. Let me see what we got here. That's not the one I'm looking for. That's the directory I'm looking for. And that's the picture that I'm looking for. Okay. So I'll say that's also supposed to be darker. Uh oh, oh, that's what those are. All right, just uh, trying to identify what some of this stuff is. Here, let me get a little bit of the s I'm working into this, too. And I think we've got that set. Let's darken this up a smidge. Okay, here, this... Mm, I don't want to go too light there. Also, I'm going to grab just a little bit of the Terra Rosa. See, changing the, the color temperature on that a little bit. So that's not all just the yellow. Now I can go back. Uh, this is the radiant yellow here, by the way. Mm, I'm going to get a little bit of my Indian yellow in there just to fortify that a bit. Now we'll start to lighten this up. Let me also, I'm going to bring up yet another image here. Where's the, ah, there we go. I need to see what the back of the hair looks like. So I think I still have one more of this miniature here that I can uh, uh, do another diorama of. Yeah, maybe that one is more of a permanent piece. It's part of the diorama as opposed to sort of a removable, playable piece. Ah, there we go. So everybody, please check out Steep T. Steep just posted the photos. Just posted the photos of what he was doing. So please go check out what Steep T is doing. And everybody, please give Steep T a follow. Steep, if you want to shout yourself out, that would be a that would be good because Armored Wolf is at Gen Con. And uh, Armored Wolf will be at booth 2713. So you want to get those dice bags and such from Armored Wolf. I don't believe he has any of the basing products there. I actually meant to ask him, but I think uh, there just wasn't going to be room for that at their booth. They, It's hard enough for him to just get all their regular stuff in there, much less a whole new product line. But Armored Wolf also makes the crushed glass snow, the fantastic grass tufts, and everything else. Now, well, Rumble, I'm glad, glad that you could hang out here. And uh, there was a few reasons why I kind of waited. So what was it, 1 o'clock in the morning to start this? My time. Part of, I was just uh, trying to get my head into the game. And then I thought, if I wait till about 1... That would make it, what, about 6 or, no, about 7 or 8 in the morning in Germany, say? Probably 8 in the morning in Germany. I thought, well, maybe that makes it uh, a little more accessible for folks in the UK, f France, Germany, that sort of thing. Uh, so, Steep, I don't have any commands. Yeah, so the the exclamation point is just going to be an exclamation point. It's a, it's a dead character here. There's no no commands. Sorry about that. Yeah, we've been at this what 28 months now. We uh, never did the commands. Of course, usually Armored Wolf is here, and he he does all that fantastic 
moderation work and that's why we want to also support Armored Wolf when he's off at his convention he'll also be doing Dragon Con so yeah he's uh, he's doing Gen Con this coming weekend he'll be at Dragon Con was that Labor Day weekend or whatever so here, let's get the uh, sword hilt here, a little bit of this uh, gold on there. Yeah, sorry about that, Steep. <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, it's kind of funny because I know that Blades, she uh, was moderating Painterly Gits stream, and she was trying to do the, the whole exclamation point thing, and I said, good luck, I have no clue how that works. I have absolutely no clue. Never done that. I know some people have, oh, was it Chatbot? I think that's what it is. Yeah, I think it's Chatbot or something like that. Yeah, don't have, uh, don't use that here. Uh, so Full Wild says that it is 0900 hours there. That that's how you guys do that, right? Full wild, all nine hundred, uh, using the military time. Yeah, here uh, it's it's only just going to be uh, a.m. or p.m. I try to keep apprised of time zones. Oh, actually, when does uh, when is daylight savings time hit? In, uh, not daylight, is it daylight, because it's fall back. Oh, that's right, I'm actually going to get me an hour back. Holy smokes. Yay me. I'm thinking, is that September? It's got to be in September or something like that, right? I don't know. But I know that in Europe, you guys do that at a different time than we do. I think you do it either a week before us or a week after us. Yeah, steep. It. Uh, I swear. Now, I, I. I wish I could be in way more people's streams th than I can be in, but it seems like every time I'm in somebody's stream, I hear that dreaded phrase: "The chat box not working." Why is the chat bot not working? I, I hear that over and over again every time I'm in somebody's stream, and I said, "Well, I don't know if that's the best use of my time." trying to set something up when every single time I'm in somebody's stream the chat bot is in revolt and so or on strike or uncooperative in some way shape or form so again we're just uh, really quickly here trying to set up some of our skin tone colors uh, speaking of skin tone maybe we'll try and get some lighter skin tone in here why not She's fair and pale and everything. Oh my gosh, you know who we've never had on screen together? We've never had. <laughs> She's like, oh, good grief. Yeah, I will just chop your head off. He's like, well, you already have. You broke up with me by Palantir. Wasn't that bad enough? Jeez, now you're going to chop my head off too? It's like you're just crying like a little wuss into it. Hey, that's my handkerchief. Uh, Bithron, we never. <laughs> How long have I been waiting to do that scene, Bithron? How long have I been waiting to do that scene? Oh, see what we're going to do? We're going to mix. Uh, that's a little bit of the Egyptian violet. No, sorry. Uh, radiant violet with that terra rosa and a touch of the asphaltum. A little touch of it there. So, yeah, Balrog, oh uh, gosh, uh, there's uh, that other Balrog that I was telling you about, the one from uh, Kurzlik Miniatures. Oh, yeah. Um, so as far as the Lord of the Rings 3D printing, guys, you know you can't go wrong with Diwali. I mean, we've done tons and tons of Diwali stuff here. We've done uh, these guys. We've done, here's our Elks right here. We've done so much from Diwali on stream. Printing goes ever on also. Printing goes ever on. We did all of the dwarves. Uh, here's, again, more stuff from Diwali. Look at these fabulous trolls right here and warg marauders. Love those Kurzlik miniatures as well. 
So we've done a bunch of stuff from Kerr's look. Here's uh, here's one of our elves, uh, kind of a Rivendell knight. That is from, uh, and that oh here is Medbury. Medbury miniatures. Now we've also done stuff from, oh gosh, uh, Colbays. We've done stuff from Colbays as well. And, uh, let's see, I think we've mentioned them all. There is somebody else that is, well, supposed to be sending me some files at a certain point, so hopefully they send me those. Uh, it would be yet another fell beast with a Nazgul on it, because, you know, more Nazgul, more better. Uh, especially since it'll give me basically infinite opportunities to do basing tutorials for fell beasts. And I actually have a tutorial on the Patreon page for one, one of those. We painted it up on stream. That would be the Witch King on Fell Beast. Oh, let me see if I can scroll on up there and find him. I think we went too far already. Where is our Witch King? Witch King is this king right here somewhere. There he is. So we made that base. That's sal that's all a bunch of sculpey there. So that weighs a bunch. It's a lot heavier than him. And that was not just for appearances. It was also for gaming purposes. Because flying bases, what do they want to do? They just want to tip over. Right? They just want to fall right over every single time. That is, uh, it was kind of designed not to fall over. Uh, now, of course, I haven't had a chance to actually play a game with him yet. But uh, that was the idea behind it anyways. All right, let me put this one away here, and let me go to this one. All right, let's get some darks in here. Uh, I think some Van Dyke Brown, maybe. We need to darken up, I think, on the underside here of the eyebrows. We'll have to come back in, lighten those up again. All right, I think, uh, yeah, then we can come back to our to the eyebrows there and get the lights on the top of that. So yeah, well, Balrog, uh, it was the same thing with the Balrog, too. Because that's the, the, I think I told you, that's the old metal Balrog, like the original one. Seriously, I, I was digging around. I was looking for something else. And, well, I dug too deep, and I found a Balrog. And it was the old metal Balrog. And I actually had to do, uh, I used the heavy gloss gel to make the extra flames on him. Because, yeah, the original metal one does not come with that much flame work. Believe me, it does not. So we had to add a bunch of that. I might go with a little smidge of Prussian blue. And there's some of that. There's some of our dark green. That is the perline black. Go a little bit darker green, and then we'll try and come back with some of our uh, some of our lights as well. So can everybody please give Steep T that follow, and of course I also follow Rottweiler. And Rottweiler, thank you so much for all the gift subs. Thank you so much. And right, Ken wife, I hope that. Uh, well, I know think it's a it's kind of an adventure for you there. There's a whole bunch of things going on. Hopefully, maybe, perhaps, things are a little bit less adventuresome there. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, he has a salamander's army. Well, thank you so much, Rottweather. Well, here we can. Oh, where did he, here he is. Here he is. I've actually painted a bunch of salamander stuff. This was a tutorial video that I did. Uh, it was kind of fun because I got to do that warmer green color and, well, and a little bit of object source lighting too because, you know, that's always fun. A little smidge of freehand right there. So, yeah, this was, uh, this was a blast. I actually painted way back in the day a land raider and some assault marines, some salamander assault marines, and I swear there was a drop pod. Yeah, I think I had to do a salamander's drop pod back in the day too. That was a long, long time ago. But thank you so much, Rottweiler. Appreciate that. Appreciate everything. 
and uh, definitely say hello. Well, I'll just say hello to your son. So selling. Oh, I. Oh, you know what? Somewhere on the blog, I don't know where the heck it is, but there is a a converted Vulcan that I did. I actually used some of my Lizard Man army bits and probably a Terminator of some kind or something like that to create Vulcan. So that was that was something I did way way back in the day. Oh well, that's cool, Rottweiler. That is fantastic. Well, I I hope that you know he loves the the miniature painting as much as we do. Cause oh my goodness, I I would have loved doing this kind of stuff back in the day. Oh, that would have been so much fun. Here we're just gonna grab our blending brush again, right? Do some of that. Yeah, right, Ken wife. Um, I I know. There's there's the physical, right? And, and there's the the person who has the thing going on, but it has a blast radius, doesn't it, right, Ken Wife? Uh, I think they all have a blast radius, but some of them have a really big blast radius, and you just get caught up in the blast. It's like a it's like a stinking mortar round or something like that. And it, it's uh, it's very insidious because you're just kind of there and you there's no recharging right there's no charging station for the caregivers there there is no such well you can try now chocolate covered raisins is a good charge well <laughs> the charge is temporary i guess ah uh, so so somebody it's, it's just like when the kids get the dog, it's the dad who has to walk the dog in the middle of the night or, or take the dog out in the yard in the middle of the night. So when the kids get the Imperial Knight, it's the dad that has to assemble it. Yeah, right, Ken Wife, it's... And I know people will say, well, you need to get rest. You need to do this, you need to do that. And you say, well... That's that's great in theory. We would all love to sleep. Because we're not doing it because or we're not not sleeping because we enjoy it. There's just you never know uh, what's going to happen next. It's it's a it's a d6 random encounter chart except you're rolling a d20. So there's a uh, there's lots of extra adventures in there that you didn't want. Yeah, that's you you didn't want to be on that chart at all. You just want to kind of roll for initiative and get it over with, don't you? Instead of uh, instead of just kind of a uh, poking around at the edges or just being poked in the eye. Now here we're just uh, again working some lighter colors into this. It's uh, got a few little different things. I didn't want it to be straight up greenish colored, and I might try to get a little bit of that reflected onto our sword blade. Where the heck is my blending brush? There you are. I'm going to need a few other little colors in our sword blade there too because uh, if it ain't got magenta, it ain't metal. I say that all the time. Here, why don't we uh, chuck a few more lights into the clothes here. I'll have to come back into that with some darks as well. But you, you see, this is not one gentle layer up, right? That was significantly lighter than what's on there. That That's the whole benefit of the oils. You see, there's not a whole lot of mixing that happens here. This is where the mixing happens. This is really your palette right over here, this thing. So if everyone can please give Right Ken Wife, and again, Right Ken Games a follow. They are also, uh, it's a bit of a long term type of a thing to deal with there so please uh, give right can wife and right can games all the support that you can because uh, well, when you're kind of in these type of situations the only recharge this is my recharge right here it is just uh, just hanging out with you guys 
this is the only time I see anybody or talk to anybody or anything like that. So it is much appreciated, everybody that hangs out with me here. I mean, even in normal times, uh, you, you miss the streaming when you don't get to do it. Obviously, Kathy really misses the streaming. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I think we are a long, uh, it could be months. It could be months before that happens again. So just just so that folks know it that you might it might take a long time before that happens again which is unfortunate cuz she really misses it. Hmm, we got to start thinking about some of our later stuff over here. How's about indigo again? Ooh, that would be interesting. I want to see what happens with some of the really... Ooh, yeah, that's that's kind of always a fun combination. The brilliant yellow pale and some of the indigo. May not be quite light enough, but let's just start with this here. Ah, okay. Ah, that's... Uh, yeah, that, oof, that would be... Uh, it's a little bit late in life to learn that and a little bit of a stressful situation to learn that and that's not exactly uh, one of the romance languages, is it? I, mean, I, I had, what, four years of French? The darndest thing was, at one point I could read and write in French but I couldn't speak it and I couldn't understand it when it was spoken to me. Go figure. That's my tiny, tiny, tiny brain. <laughs> that's how it is. So, yeah, oh, well, the, Kathy's been learning Dutch. I, I do hope that uh, in some kind of, uh, so that she doesn't just start speaking Dutch to me. Because it, it'll be a little bit difficult. It'll be a bit difficult. Of course, we watch uh, some of the different French mystery shows. What, Magellan? Oh, there's the one crazy Agatha Christie one. There's Captain Marlowe. Oh, Murder Inn. That's the other French one. So I think there's... F oh, and uh, Blood on the Vine. Or Blood of the Vine. Yeah, so there's three French shows. Obviously, subtitles. And then, of course, there's uh, Don Matteo, where we try to learn Italian unsuccessfully. So that... Uh, well... <laughs> See, see right there, right, Ken Wife? He rolled like an 18 on that D6 encounter chart. And <laughs> just, you're like looking for it on the chart. It ain't on the chart. It's not even there. It's like, wait a minute. We rolled an 18. This only goes up to 6. Yeah, Balrog, I think she's been two and uh, two plus years on the Dutch. At least two plus years studying that uh, so Dark Angel says that uh, Rottweiler uh, is in total war he starts bringing you <laughs> uh, actually ooh, uh, that unfortunately Kathy's computer well not that she can get to it anymore but it uh, it just wasn't capable of playing anything but I guess the first total war it was just too graphics intensive which is nuts, considering that you know her machine was designed for streaming. Yet uh, it is, it's very much not adequate enough to be able to play most of the Total War stuff. All right, here's uh, more brilliant yellow pale than indigo. I'm uh, probably going to have to do a little bit of pin line into this. Ah, uh, see, it's starting to turn a little bit too greenish there. I might have either wanted to stick with the turquoise here or the turquoise and the fast matte white so we might have to shift this a little bit no big deal I don't care just do a pin line wash over it so a Rottweiler uh, well, hopefully he's not getting too frustrated I'm trying to think the last time I played a video game and that was a uh, Civ well there is Civ 5 and I only got to play that a few times I think 2013 is the last time I played a computer game of any kind, or video game, or whatever. 
Yeah, 2013. That was only nine years ago. My goodness. Yeah, I have to come back in, I think, with some of my uh, indigo and do some pin line washes there and, and restore a few darks here and there. Let me see if I can't. There we go. Ah, see, that's what I needed on the other side, right there. And that was actually a little bit of the Severus blue, of all things. You know what? I want to see what happens when I try and do a little bit of Severus blue. There, ah, wow, that's lighter than I was expecting. Now, Rottweiler, do you have, uh, do you have the new Stark stuff? Because didn't they redo basically? the Lannister and Stark starter set figures because there's new halberds, right? There's new and of course, well, you you can see, I think, on the Instagrams we got the uh, the old halberd unit. A hedgehog. Thanks, Sleepy Slang. I was going to say aardvark, but I'm like, I don't think it's an aardvark. But hedgehog sounds right. Either that or maybe his name is Sonic. I don't know. But I think he's a little hedgehog, and I forget what he does in the game, but he's, uh, he can be, <laughs> he can be a little bit of a bugger, if I remember right. Now let me see if I can get the lighter treatment there on those. It's going to be difficult. It's right on these little bands, right here, right across that area. Good enough there. So thanks again, Sleepy Slang. Appreciate that. Again, the the brain is pretty much in shutdown mode. It's also 3:17 in the morning here. I guess that doesn't uh, that doesn't surprise me. I might try to lighten this up some more. I want to try it here. Okay, all right. I'll do it this way. We'll take some of the green. Mix it up with this. See that also uh, almost creates a bit of a grayish brown here. Because uh, I want those a bit, little bit lighter, but also not just dark brown. Ah, boy, sleepy slang. At first I was, I was really overjoyed. And then I kind of realized just thinking about the expanse and some of the other things where there would be s an entire seasons that would be amazing and then there would be other seasons that I just said wow that was about 40 minutes worth of TV packed into nine episodes and that really when it comes down to it in some ways that's what sort of concerns me is that it'll just be uh, it can kind of it'll swing back to the ordinary there might be s even whole entire seasons that are really good or episodes that are really good and then there might be ones that are just kind of mm, not so sure about that i would obviously love for it to be a colossal success i just don't know if things can have colossal success anymore between some of the demands of just doing the shows and the logistics I could be I could be proven 100% wrong and I do hope that's the case um, so Rottweiler I don't have any work in pro well there's there's some if you check out the Instagram well actually Rottweiler uh, if you want to check out the Instagrams so all of the 2d art I take about eight or nine pictures of each stage of these things. So from the drawing all the way to the finished thing, there's about yeah somewhere between eight, nine, ten pictures. So uh, not so much with the miniatures, but definitely with the uh, definitely with the artwork there. Yeah. Now, Dark Dan again. That was one where folks uh, they kind of said that. It kind of made a big comeback that it started out really hot 
and then went kind of into the doldrums, and then it suddenly everybody is excited about it again. So if, uh, I just, I don't know. I, I hope that really doesn't happen with the Lord of the Rings. I kind of hope to just right out of the gate, they have their mojo and they kind of hang on to it. That would be fantastic. Uh, yeah, I've never seen that. Well, basically I've seen uh, The Expanse and I think, the, oh, then there was, what, The Boys or something like that because I was I had to review that for the More Than Dice podcast because they do a media section. Now here we're just trying to lighten this up a smidge. This is some of the white and some of the radiant green together. Just trying to get a little bit of extra light in just a few areas here. Alright, well Ride Ken Wife, I appreciate you being here. And everybody please give Ride Ken Wife a follow. And of course uh, Ride Ken Wife uh, definitely 100% behind you there. And of course you have my understanding of that never ending whirl whirlwind of craziness there. And I, I know we, well, I'm not just going to say, oh yeah, I hope that gets better. I'll just say hope it gets kind of bearable. That's, uh, I think, about the best thing we can hope for in these type of situations, right? Is you just hope you can kind of uh, make it to the next day. Now, so now Dirk Danigan was, I think this is, a, a, what, a season six or seven? Uh, again, I've never seen it, but it sounds like it's uh, it's been uh, several seasons worth of that Stranger Things. I think that's a show that I've been wanting Kathy to watch. Well, because, you know, she's running out of shows. I know we've been, we were able to, for some reason, Allo Elo was back uh, free again on Amazon or whatever. So thank goodness, because we could actually catch that. Now what I'm going to do is uh, get some of the fresh fast mat out here. Just a little touch of it there. So right, Ken Wife, you have yourself a good one. All right, let me just get this out of the brush here. Snag this, and I might just mix that with the radiant magenta. I think that's radiant magenta, not radiant red. Let me see what I can do in a couple of spots here. Ah, so it's it's the last one that that what season four that everyone is uh, seems to be very 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 excited about. Now what we haven't done is. See if I can get a little bit of this light right next to the lip there. Okay, I think that sort of helped. So I, uh, it was, uh, I think it was season, well, I, I loved season three of The Expanse. Season four was kind of, mm, and then season five was kind of, oof. And then season six was, oh my gosh, where has this been for two years? Well, two seasons, like not really years. Now here I'm thinking, hmm, that could be way too late. That e Even that is a little bit on the light side, but I just wanted a little bit more of the magenta to work its way into that. Ah, okay. Oh, maybe a touch on this side too. Where's Mr. Blending Brush? Well, Dirk Dannigan, I'm glad that you were able to enjoy the heck out of that. All right, here, let me see if I can get a little bit of our but now we got the violet in there. This. We're going to say that's a, do you see that, that shadow there? 
Yeah, that's kind of just reflecting the shadow. Now, I do need to get some, I think, some lights on the sword hilt here. I don't know. Let me, let me see what happens with this. There's some tear. Well, not just the Terra Rosa. A little bit of the Esfaltum there. Ah, bingo. That's uh, it's getting already a little bit too much uh, mid-tone. I need a little bit more dark there now, I think. Come back in here with some of this brilliant yellow pale. Now that's from Williamsburg. Hey, silly moss, how you doing? So I think there is still one more season. I don't know how many, one more, whatever. But I think there's another season of the Expanse coming up. Again, I don't really. I'm not always up on that kind of stuff. I don't really... Those are the only shows that I've ever seen. I think the last movie that I saw was years ago. That was the Midway movie. So that was like in 2019 or something. Yeah, I think that's the last time I saw a movie. Let's see if I can get a little lighter here. I might also have to throw a little more... I think some warm colors into the mid-tone and shadow areas of the hair on, on her here. I think so. So, Silly Math, I hope that you're having yourself a good... What is today? Well, Wednesday. Now it's Wednesday morning. I don't know about uh, streaming on Thursday. I think uh, that might be a, another bridge too far with the house guest that's coming here. So that could make things very dicey. We'll just kind of see how all of that goes. Ah, Silly Maz. Yeah, Silly Maz joins that that very exclusive club. <laughs> yeah, that's it's not really a membership that you want. Don't really want that membership in that particular club. I would, uh, I would like to trade in my membership to that club. Sadly, I'm resigned. Uh, pretty much resigned myself to having no sleep over the next probably two, three weeks or so. That's probably how that's going to play out. Now let me see if I can't lighten that up, but just a smidge more on their forehead. I think we also need to. Uh, Make a little bit of a scowl on this. Yeah, let's see if we can do that here. We can try it by adding a little bit of the light there. But I, I might want to just come back in with some dark too. Yeah, so Bithron says there is no seventh season. Uh, Thranuel, they uh, now of course. Uh, are you talking all brands, or is there one that's a little bit more, what would you say, noticeable than than other ones? The the paint comes out of the two pretty darn thick. It comes out pretty thick, and I think you can sort of see it in uh, when when, <coughs> when I'm doing some of the color charts. Yeah, doing some of those color charts, you can see, because I'm just mixing it right out of the tube. I'm not uh, thinning that down at all. Uh, so Thranuel, again, <coughs> you, you've seen me do this a bunch of times, right? So here again, this brush right here. Well, actually, here, look, let's, uh, we can do it over here. This is This is straight out of the tube right here. This is straight out of the tube, uh, radiant violet, yeah. Now, if you feel like there's too much on there, you could have a paper towel, you could have a sponge like this. You could see how it got rid of a whole bunch of stuff on there. And you can see there is not too much paint getting on here. There's very little paint. Also, look at how I'm, look at how I'm holding this brush. None of this, right? Because uh, that's not going to work. Very, very light touch on this brush here. Look at this. Look at my hand. It's closer to the end of the brush than to the front of the brush. And so little paint, yet look at how... Uh, here, let me zoom out here. There, a little bit like that. And we'll do it again here. 
Okay, see how that's starting to turn a little bit darker? But look at this. There's practically no paint on there. But because of the wonders of oils, looky here. I'm still, I'm still going. It's like the Energizer brush. It just keeps going and going and going. There's some more. Poof. There it is. Now you can see that's uh, basically all nice and dark. Let's uh, try and change this up a little bit. Uh, there's uh, more of the violet. And again, I'm going to take one of these sponges here. I'm just going to take some of the excess off. And we'll have at it once again. Like so. Here, let's get the this. But it's very, very important that the while well, you're holding the brush, you can just get two fingers on the brush here. Hey, Orchrist. Everybody, if you could please give Orchrist Studios a follow. Orchrist, I hope that you're doing okay. Hope that you're doing all right. And again, everybody that's maybe at Gen Con, uh, I don't know, maybe you're, well, let's see, it's Wednesday morning. Maybe you're a dealer that's uh, up all night in some kind of a line waiting to get in to get your booth put in. Uh, Armored Wolf, again, will be at booth 2713. You know what? I'm going to switch gears. This is the uh, Radiant Green right here. Just changing that a little bit. Now, sorry that those are uh, kind of in recovery mode there, but hopefully it is a recovery mode. And again, what I might think about doing is uh, some of that, taking some of the heavy gloss gel, actually mixing it, mixing it with, uh, oh gosh, either the Green Stuff World Intensity inks, or if I have uh, the right color, some of the contrast paints. So that might be a video that I try to do. Yeah, once this is all dry, I might just try to do that. I, I have no idea if it's going to work, but I thought it would kind of give these that sort of stalactite or whatever look from the glittering caves. And again, this these are from Make It Epic Basing, and there's our Eowyn right there. So I think we're all caught up. I think so. I think we are. Now let me see. I'm going to take away a little bit of the magenta. Now I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. It's just straight up and down. Oh, let's zoom back in again here. I'll do the same over here. So I'm not looking to blend colors. I'm just looking to take the edge off of that a little bit because I want my edge to be up there, don't I? At the here again, I want to get some more of the warm colors in there. And I'll just use this Terra Rosa. Uh, thanks, Bitthron. So, Bitthron was kind enough to post a link to the Instagrams, and you can uh, peruse that, and you'll see my sculpted AON bust there. That was that was really fun. I'm hoping at some point to be able to do some just some 2D portraits. Now obviously, a, you know, a Gandalf and a, an Aowen, and so those would be very fun to do as portraits. And thank you so much, Bitron. I appreciate that. Again, normally Armored Wolf would be doing that, but Armored Wolf is at Gin Con right now. So everybody, again, please, if you're at Gin Con. Please make sure to visit Armored Wolf at his booth. So I'm going to go back with the indigo here and restore some of those lines. Again, these uh, bits are from Make It Epic Basing, the miniature itself. That is that goes back a long, long time ago. Ah, thank you, Dark Danigan. Dark Danigan just posted the link to the Patreon page. And we just finished our latest army painting series. It's uh, well, these aren't well. They're not going to be magnetized because some folks actually get some of the miniatures there. But this was a combination of a few things: TMM, uh, a little bit of freehand. Yeah, all twelve of these guys 
that that kind of extensive freehand. So here's uh, this was our color test figure right there. So again, the we got the TMM going, and of course uh, the basing is also a part of the video. Well, it's episode one. The first episode of every army painting series is always basing because we love basing. So again, uh, thank you so much for posting the sculpt of Aon. I technically, I actually did sculpt a miniature of Aon back in oh, probably 2004, something like that. Maybe I should try sculpting a uh, a miniature again. I don't think they ever did Aon. Well, speaking of the that scene there of Medjusel. I don't think they ever did a miniature of Eowyn at Medjusel. Yeah, Dark Dan again. Now, let's see. There's a Dark Sword vid that I want to do. And then there is a... Well, this could be... Uh, I don't know. I guess it would be sort of a basing video. I also want to try, oh, and uh, I think it actually will be maybe combined with the, oh, yeah, that's right, maybe with the Radagast uh, diorama that I did. So I might, uh, might put those two together in a pair of videos or whatever. I never, never quite know exactly what I'll be able to do these days. Let me see. I don't know. I don't really want to... She didn't really have a ton of uh, makeup on. So I don't think we're going to go too crazy with that. I was just about to throw some more on, but I think we'll just leave that as is. Let's see if I can darken that down. And I'm going to maybe th throw a little bit more of the Severus Blue in here. And this is the same Severus Blue. And, and this figure right here is pretty much of the same era. This is all metal. Both of these are metal figures. Even this banner is metal. Look at that. That is a solid chunk of metal right there. All of this stuff is metal. Metal horse, metal figure, metal everything. Severus Blue. It's going to go there. And then we'll take a blending brush to it. Like this. Boom. You can see all I did was literally just throw Severus Blue there. I didn't do anything else. There was no mixing, nothing on the palette. I just took Severus Blue, slapped it on there, took this blending brush, which is just a little soft craft brush, and that little tap, 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 kind of Morse code. And all that does is just kind of soften things up. You want to take away some brush strokes. Now we call that the brush stroke management phase. I'm going to sneak on over here again. Let me see what I got on the brush here. I'm going to take some of our greens here. And we'll just look at where, look at this. Nowhere near that. Fair. Am I doing this? I'm um, kind of shy there, right? Here. Look at this. My finger's resting on the on the plaque there. Boom. Look at that. See that? Nice and easy. And we'll do the same here. Yep. Uh, look, do you see this brush shaking at all? Not so much, right? This is actually on the table. My hand is actually on the table here. This is resting on the piece of wood. And look at all the fun stuff I can do. Here we're going to switch to the radiant blue. Thin this down a bit. And actually, it's annual, uh, even there, that was basically out of the tube. And then I just hit it with some of the thinner. So, looky there. So, we, we started out doing a little bit of dry brushy stuff. Not so dry brushy now. There we are. So, uh, Dirk Dan again, I, uh, I'm hoping to get the 3D printing going again here uh, maybe by the weekend I don't know but there's uh, I don't know if you saw is it not uh, 
Oh, it's Kurzlik Miniatures. He did Army of the Dead, but also Cavalry. So what I wanted to do was, because uh, we did Army of the Dead, but in acrylics, we did that Army series, oh gosh, now years ago. I want to try and do that again, but maybe uh, combine the fluorescent green, but with TMM. So, because we've already done plenty of Army of the Dead and, and the non-metallic stuff, right? But I thought maybe we could do all the rust and see if we could somehow do TMM with the fluorescent green and rust. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea if that's going to work. It could fail horribly. Or it could be a spectacular success. Who knows? We won't know unless we try. So that's one of the new Army Painting series. There's also uh, some Merfolk. I have a bunch of, well, basically kind of undersea uh, basing bits already from Make It Epic, and they've got a bunch more coming. Oh, yeah, Make It Epic has a ton of stuff that they're working on. And I got a chance to have a little sneak preview of that. Now we're just switching over here again. This is the Radiant Violet. It's the Radiant Violet. We're going to push some of that over here now. So, so Dark, Dark Danigan, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, uh, the only other time we did anything remotely like that was with the, the Necrons. Remember that? So we did the Necrons in acrylic. And then the Necrons were one of the first, I think it was the first army painting series where we did TMM with oils. Uh, we learned a bunch. Oh, boy, did we learn a bunch in that series. And we sure as heck have learned a lot since about TMM with the oils. And that's why I did that one video where, remember, we split the bust in half. We did half of it in TMM and the other half in non-metallic metals. Just to show that there's no difference between the two as far as what makes them work. Edges, reflected lights, strong highlight, contrasty type things. That's what makes it work. So you can see that. And those things start to look a little bit more like uh, what Eowyn's got next to her. Let's do some more of our blue on this, I guess. And then uh, Dirk Danning again, that... Uh, if you want to see, I'm sure it's on the More Than Dice YouTube channel, but I, I did that diorama for uh, Radagast. What I would like to do is uh, show a few different ways of trying to get the uh, foliage on those uh, fir trees. We'll see if it works. Uh, again, I have a couple of ideas. Maybe we combine a few things. Yeah, Dark Dan again. Uh, I did that in acrylics, and then we did it again in oils. But that was, uh, oh, that was when I first got the Gamlin silver. And that's when we found all, it had all the alkids in there. I didn't really know what the alkids were at that point. That was, uh, that was an interesting lesson. Just gonna throw in some lights. I'm also gonna just uh, take some of the edge off of those lights there. All right, let's go back to this now. And uh, oh, it was the the Marion Street. So instead of the oh, instead of the Marion Street, I figured it's time to show this again, right? Where we mix the fluorescent powders with the linseed oil. So that'll also be part of the video. The basing is going to be mm, probably kind of on the simpler side. Nothing super complex. Because I would like them to match, well, my other uh, my other Army of the Dead. And we actually have uh, some of the Army of the Dead also, too, on the YouTube channel. And I painted a bunch of them on stream, too. 
There's a, a bunch of vids on the YouTube channel. Normally I do one or two just regular vids for the YouTube channel each month. That's uh, kind of been impossible with the current situation. Hopefully we can start doing those again. Ah, so we already got that green mixed up. Uh, I think what I want to try is I've got the alternate uh, p uh, fluorescent powders, the ones that I got off of Amazon. And I want to, I think, give those a try, see how those work. Now here, what I want to give a try to is a couple of really light highlights in the hair. I mean, really light highlights. Not too many. Just a few here and there. And that wasn't quite where I wanted that to go. We'll take our blending brush to it here. Just, uh, again, take the edge off of it. Let's come back. There, there. Again, this is just the, the fast matte white. I almost feel like I could put a little bit of my yellow in there, uh, some of the Indian yellow, but we'll just leave it be as it is here. Also might want to do one more highlight on the skin in a few places on her face. Forehead. See, ah, see the nose has gotten a little bit dark on that side, on the nostrils there, so we'll backtrack a little. Ah, there, that's uh, bad. I, I might have to soften that up a little bit. There's just a lot of dark that's right there at that edge. Let's get some of the magenta in there, too. Same right here. Now, the upper lip, I guess I'll try and lighten that up, too. Let me see what happens with this. Right on the upper lip, and then a little bit on the lower lip. And the chin, we also sort of need that little, that cleft in the chin. Sort of a distinctive thing there. I don't know if I want it to be quite this light here in these, but maybe. And uh, we could actually do some textured cloth here, I suppose. I, I don't know if we're going to do that or not. We could, uh, especially maybe just the where we have these lights that we're adding here. Get possibly a little hint at some texture there. Some over here. Uh, stick with the light again. And I hear right at the top here, but not down there. Otherwise, it's all just going to be exactly the same level of highlight. And it's not going to have any kind of shape to it, no flow to it. It was a little bit handier painting the, the hair on our portrait bust. It was a little bigger than this. I swear her nose was big, about as big as half the body here. Uh, well, Thranual, uh, if you want probably something that's a bit of a warmer green. So maybe something, a radiant green mixed with uh, maybe uh, something like a radiant yellow mixed with a phthalo green. That's going to be a pretty intense type of a warm green there. Actually, uh, Threnu, you can watch some of the old, well, probably the one like Isengard. Oh, even, even that's got some warm greens to it, but this is the one I'm thinking. You might want to check out this. That's that's some summery greens right there. That was probably uh, mostly 
I would say maybe the radiant turquoise and a little bit of Indian yellow and then some brilliant yellow pale, something like that maybe. That could uh, possibly do the trick. That's got a little bit uh, of Indian yellow to it and I'm just trying to See, if that gets, if there's too much light that goes back there, it just is going to, yeah, that's going to be too much. We'll just have to say no. A little bit of the Egyptian, or sorry, the radiant violet on the ends of her shoes there. Now the underside of her nose, let me see, I'm going to get my, uh, whoops, wrong thing here. Let's see which one of these. It could be this one right here. I th think I need to make that a little less expansive. A highlight on the nose. That's going to be tricky. Let's see what happens with this uh, Terra Rosa. Hopefully that's not going to be too dark. And make that nose too sharp. I think to make, th I'm going to just get a little more of the dark there. Yeah, I think that works for, well, the uh, scowl such as it is. I'm gonna come back here to some of the lighter skin tone again. Of all the time to, I knew there was something I was forgetting, and that was my portrait bust, because I was going to actually kind of use that as a bit of a reference for some of our color here. Now I'm trying to almost do a little bit of a brush stroke management. Now that little, oh gosh, that's going to be tough doing that little cleft there, but let's see. I mean, she's barely an inch tall. He's actually a lot shorter than some of the other figures are. Well, that just uh, didn't quite work there. Part of it is the hair comes right in front of her face. You know, I might just have to lighten that up, that hair. I'll start it off with the Brilliant Yellow Pale, see if that works. Uh, it's just going to come right in front of this oak, yeah. That's probably for the best. And now the upper lip. Oh boy, I don't want to. I don't wanna make it too pronounced. Let's not make that too pronounced here. Let's just do maybe that much. A little lighter on the surrounding chin area. I think we're good on the skin there. What about the fingers here? Oh, the knuckles anyway. There, she had a couple of knuckles. She didn't have four of them. That was uh, important. Now I might also, while well, we're working with some, that's uh, a little too much red. Okay. I think we need to do that too. And we'll let we'll just set that aside. Let the paint have a chance to set for a bit, and then I'm gonna try and come back into this and uh, work on our glittering caves a bit more. Yeah, you know, we've switched our grip. You know, well, not really switched, but the our grip is way farther back on that brush. So it, it doesn't really show up, but it's only in this one picture over here. Uh, again, you can just uh, do a quick Google search for the glittering cave scene. And you can kind of get an impression for what I have to do is uh, I've got to take that, that heavy gloss gel and really mix in some kind of almost, well, terra rosa slash Indian yellow. And mix that in with the heavy gloss gel and then just kind of drip it over the top of this. 
uh, because obviously this looks, I mean, it has kind of the same texture as far as the rock goes, but then the stalactite stuff, there is no texture of that here, so we need to somehow get that added. Hey, Bitsron. Actually, well, here, let's uh, let's point out some of the things so you can see that that's that uh, Severus blue there and the magenta. When uh, we, we killed the color on this, you're going to see that that Severus blue is the same value as everything. It's just it's a color difference. So actually, the values should probably compress. Ah, see that? See, there's actually, it looks like the dress has less contrast. Why? Because a lot of the contrast that's in there is color. It has nothing to do with lights or darks. There's a blob of Severus blue here that you can't see because it's the same value as everything else. We're going to bring back our color, bring it back, and now you see that? See, it's right in there. So make sure we get some of that stuff off of there. And I'm just trying to get this more in tune with the miniature. I can always stick the miniature on there and then come back and uh, fool around with this some more to try and match it even uh, closer. Uh, thanks, Lady B. That's uh, it's been really fun doing this AON figure. I just I wasn't quite sure. I was more thinking about the. Uh, ginger blue, but I'm kind of glad I went with that sea foam type of uh, green there. And I think that was pretty well worth it. Let me go a little lighter, perhaps. Right there. So again, we put this together on the More Than Dice podcast that should be on their YouTube channel somewhere by now. In fact, that's, I'm sure it's already up there. And you can kind of see how we made this. And that this uh, this was, I think, all of a half an hour, seriously, to make this whole diorama. And again, the figure just goes right in there. Uh, we start out with Dazzler directly. We sort of sh shoved some of the the uh, basing bits from Make It Epic in there. Then I started to put some tree bark there. Uh, that's what all this is, uh, tree bark of various sizes. Well, uh, Thranio, I know it was... Uh, well, it, it's certainly been toasty here as well. Hopefully, it, it seems like it has cooled off in Europe at least uh, a little bit there. Let me see if I can't. I get would have been really nice to maybe have my Fanchon Red. In lieu of that, let me see what happens when I take the that other red, the Napsol red, we just mix it with a little bit of the uh, radiant yellow, warms it up a smidge. Okay, that's, that is it. That's that little bit of color that I was hoping to get there. Uh, Leo, Leo, uh, that's, it's, it's so funny because, uh, well, I think there were people that wanted to give us uh, honorary citizenship to uh, Finland, Sweden, and Norway. Of course, we wanted to have an evil fjord in Norway where we could just build a painting lair. And nobody would be totally undetectable. Big Acrylic could never find us there. Of course, uh, living in the Arctic Circle would be, I don't know, I would love for it to just be, well, I guess if we were to say z uh, centigrade, somewhere about maybe 2 degrees centigrade and sunny all year long, that would be my dreamscape for weather right there. I don't know, maybe, maybe it could get to about 4 degrees Celsius or something like that. As long as there was sunshine, we want that crisp air. That would be very nice. All right, let me, uh, I need to still lighten that edge. I guess it is a collar-ish type thing. Yeah, here, let's uh, lighten this up right here. 
wasn't sure what that was. Light mat two. Now the the sword here. We have several darks and I want to find some more lights. I think so. Maybe I'll even use some of my radiant green. Touch of our fast mat white here. Let's see what happens with this. Up here or down here? I think down here. Bingo, that is another thing that was missing. More of our light there. So, oh yeah, that's right, we were we did see, manage to see a few more episodes of Allo L O today. I think it's still the first season of that. And that's why uh one of our, uh, my, uh, let's see, a battle report videos for bolt action was called the Bridge to Nuvion. We had Cafe Rene, which is hilarious because just, I don't know, a block and a half from this house is located a restaurant called Cafe Rene. And I went to St. Rene Grammar School, so that's a, uh, it's like Wapoville is new is uh, also Nuvion. Uh, let's see. I, I guess uh, somebody has a birthday, so Leo has a birthday. So that means somebody in the chat has to sing Happy Birthday, uh, kind of like Marilyn Monroe style. I don't know how you're supposed to do that in the chat, but uh, somebody can try and do that. Add a little more of my light right there. Ah, thanks, Lady B. Yeah, the the mimes of Moria. That was a really fun project. That at some point, maybe I'll get a chance to to do those again. Probably using three D printed stuff. So some 3D printed gobos or something like that, and then we can, well, we can slice those up and rework them to our heart's content. Let me see if I can find some more light along the edge here. Ah, there. Ah, see, we lost that little bit of edge. Boom, okay, okay and that's better. That's better. Same down here. What about the hair? I think I need to get some light right back in there. I don't want to lighten this up too much. If I do that too much, we're just going to lose all sense of flow in that hair. So it looks like Lady B managed to figure out a way to do that somehow in the chat just using text alone. And of course, oh, I had a sound effect. I I had a sound, it was, uh, oh, I know what it was. It was one of my al alerts on my phone. Yes, yeah, sadly, the stupid new phone makes it almost impossible to do the alert. It was, uh, Hello, hello. This is Nighthawk. Can you hear me over? That was uh, that was one of my text sounds. Then we also had the uh, sound bite for Michelle. Listen very closely. I will say this only once. That was another one of my sound bites. All right, that works. A little bit of a highlight on the shoe there. Good enough. Perhaps some right along the edge of the bodice right here. Right there is good enough, I think. And then we're talking about maybe a little texture sneaking in there, possibly. 
Hmm, I'm gonna grab my blendy brush here. That, that's the edge I was looking to snag there. Now, I never really did get any of the severs up there. Let me see what happens. Severs, well, that's a, that's kind of a dirty version of severs. Yeah, so that right over here, that should act as a nice little contrast against the, the blonde hair. Throw some of that into there, and then again, blending brush. Should have no paint on that. And we're not wiping it like this. I just go smear all that stuff together. We're just tapping it like that. That's all we're doing. Hey, Robosh. Oh, gosh. Dark Dan again. What is that? Because uh, uh, he always said no's. What was he trying to say when he just said no's? But that's <laughs> something about uh, news. He has hit a news. Because, of course, he was an expert in French, right? Uh, right, Dark Dan again? Uh, so, Bithron, unfortunately, with my f the way this phone works, it just... Uh, I can go to Zedge and try and find those things. Uh, it just doesn't give me the option, sadly to do uh, any of the fun sound bites. The 3G, the old 3G phone that I had. I had a million different sounds for that phone. This one just can't do nothing with it. It's it's kind of a bummer. Uh, let me see. And actually, uh, that's the other thing too is uh, bit, I think with the, when the phone doesn't update, it also kills all of them. I mean, the old phone kind of did that too. So Robush, nice to see you again. That's it. It's when he had news. He had news. I have very good news. That's right, Dirk Danigan. Yes. And of course, uh, it is I, the clear, the clear. Yes. And then of course uh, the glowing knobs. They can't forget about the glowing knobs. I'm going to actually change that to also a little bit of severs there. Again, it's not changing the value, light or dark. Uh, yep, there's a... Uh, oh, my goodness. And then, of course, uh, Helga and Hair Flick. That was uh, what was always crazy, and of course the little tank, the SDK two two two. All right, there. That's again. This using the Severus blue. That's uh, it's lighter, but I also am again changing the color. Get a little bit of that Severus blue in there. I might do the same over there. So they're just trying to reflect this onto the sword blade, right? Oh, uh, Bithron, you can get the sound bite. It's not getting the sound bite. It's just you can't, well, you just can't put it on anything. <laughs> that, that's where the bummer comes in. I just was really surprised. So I just kind of gave up. Well, let's put it this way. I could do that sound bite. Everything would have that sound. Uh, whereas what I wanted to have it were just, well, basically individuals. Yeah. Okay, uh, what the, let's get a little bit of the severs onto the rocks there. Now I'm going to go back to this one here. And maybe throw a, look at a little bit of the Severus blue on a couple of these uh, rocks right here. Very, look at this. I only have two fingers on the brush. That's it. Just the two fingers. And there's very little paint on that brush. There is not a whole lot of paint there. I'll go with the, uh, gosh, the lighter green on this. Uh, no, I want to match what we have on AON's base, I think. 
Got a little bit of the radiant turquoise. Yeah, a little bit of the radiant turquoise and then some of this here. Don't want too much thinner in that here. There. That might work. That just might work. There. And then I'll just hold up our AON uh, next to this and see if we have about the same level of uh, highlight as we do on AON there. All right, AON comes back. Mm, it's pretty similar. Maybe a little more of the, oh, indi that's right. We got sitting right over here, too. Some of the indigo and the yellow, brilliant yellow pale mixed together. And, of course, uh, Dark Dan again. And in Nuvion, we also had the... Uh, well, we had the Fallen Madonna painting in there, too. That was in one of the buildings. Yes, indeed. Uh, that was that was so much fun creating that landscape. And all the buildings made out of pink foam exactly the same way that I made the uh, all of our Lord of the Rings buildings. Same concept there. And just throw a little bit of dry brushy stuff there. Uh, again, that's back to the that's the indigo mixed with a little bit of really yellow pale. Uh, not as intense as say the radiant green. Be sort of in the same family, but definitely not quite as intense. Well, uh, you know what? We'll go back with some of the darker stuff, like indigo. We've been doing an awful lot with the light. How's about we do some indigo now? Oh, like there and there. I'll back out a bit. I keep forgetting that we're on our, our uh, diorama base here. And uh, we don't need to be quite as close up to it as uh, when we're working on AON. i snag a few little darks. There. I mean, these are in the foreground, so foreground, middle ground, background. So there's your foreground. She's getting to be more of a middle ground, and then we have uh, the background here of those tower. So that way you can see kind of an idea of the composition here. You have a large element, you have the one tallest element, and then you have varying heights here. Now you have clusters of things instead of just spreading them out evenly everywhere. And now with the uh, eyes here, I'm going to... Mm, that's going to be really, really tough, but I want to see if I can maybe do that here. There's my fast matte white. Not sure if we can make this work or not. It could be that we end up just having to paint over this again, but let me see if we can make this happen. Now I'm just going to get some of the excess of it off here. See if I can put almost a little bit of a highlight thing on her eye here. Again, I'm just want to make sure we don't have too much paint on there. Okay, there's a tiny, tiny little. Uh, that was a, too much. Uh, that was a bit too much. So, whatever. Just go back here and grab a little bit of the indigo. And we'll just put the eye back in there again. Let's try and get a little bit of our light in there now. Again, some of our light here, right there. Take some of that paint off. Almost got it. 
So again, we want her looking off that way. Uh, so, so sometimes much in more interesting to have the miniature looking sort of off screen or not directly at you. I want to look at a different little. Here, let me look at a different picture here. Ah, that's what she does. Okay, we gotta make the eyebrows darker. All right, good to know. We'll do that here. Well, maybe not too dark. I think that sort of helps a little bit. Back to this light again. Somehow, we just lost a little bit too much of our light in the eye. Ah, now there, there we go. That's what I needed. And now let me see if I can get my picture back here again. Because we darkened down the eyebrows, but now we have to lighten the skin by those. Let me see if I can do that with just this. Well, it's our original Terra Rosa Brilliant Yellow Pale mix, but now it's got a bunch of other stuff in it. That's going to go here. A little bit of it there. Not too much. Yeah, def ah, there we go. Okay, we got some expression on that face. That's good. And I might also make that a little lighter. Ah, okay, that, that softens that. That was a little bit too hard of an edge. Well, Crazy Wolf, thank you so much. I know you've been here since the beginning. I appreciate that. And uh, like I said, I'll shoot you. Uh, I always try to send people a picture of the package and stuff. So, yeah, I'll, I'll get you a picture of the package with the tracking number, all that good stuff. And I'll send you that message. And Crazy Wolf, thanks so much for being here. Appreciate that. I appreciate everybody that's been keeping me company here. Was uh, was not the greatest of days, so I really especially appreciate everybody uh, hanging out. I, I didn't send out any messages that I was going to be going live because I was not sure. It wasn't until 5 after 1 when I said, okay, I'm going to go live because I, I really wasn't sure. If I wanted to try and paint this, I was going to try and maybe do some object source lighting off camera, either side. And in the end, I just said, nah, I'm not going to do anything super crazy with that. I can always do a second one of these. So I can always do this one again. Here, I'm going to take the Egyptian Violet and the Esfultum for a few little darks here on the... Now, if there's some folds here that kind of got lost. And uh, well, let's see, now it's about 4.32 in the morning here. So I guess uh, not too many folks who are at Gen Con are really awake at this time. I had hoped to do a daytime stream. But that kind of got blown up, but... Who knows, maybe in the next couple of weeks it could be possible to do a daytime stream just with circumstances here. I don't know. So, uh, I'm going to see if I can't sneak in a few. There we go. Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, I think somebody at some point did some LOLO figures. I just, uh, if I had the ability to do the digital sculpting thing, I would most definitely sculpt some LOLO figures so that I could have them for bolt action. I, I don't know. Well, Thousand Young, I've, well, it's a little bit, uh, it's not quite the right time for Thousand Young to be joining us here, but maybe, I'm heading, maybe I can get Thousand Young to make some. I mean, it doesn't have to really look 
exactly like them. I mean, just as long as the uh, the costumes pretty much are correct, that's about all it would take. That would be hilarious. So we're going to get some more of our Egyptian violet down in some of the crevices of this. Probably need to get some more darks down here to uh, indigo, perhaps. Down here. And then something in there to separate the two hands from each other. Hey, silly moss. Nice to see you back. Ooh, let's... I'm going to go back to the S. Fulton here, or would it be the Terra Rosa? I don't know. Let me see. Uh, little Terra Rosa. No, that's too much for the S. Fulton. This might be just enough here. We have kind of a solid shape there. I was hoping to break that down a little bit further. Sorted it. Now I have to come back in with my lights. And now that'll be the same radiant violet mixed with that same as Fultum. And I'll see if I can restore some of the folds. They're not the whole thing. 